Welcome. Let me say something more about interaction of geodesics. So there are three parts. There is space. We define the geometry. Uh, finite abstract simplicia complex. Maybe just for variety, I mention the ensemble spaces which work perfectly like manifolds. They are generalized manifolds, and unlike manifolds which refer to spheres and spheres refer to homotopy. The, the ensemble definition does not need that. It's a recursive definition, which is very nice. First, you define generalized spheres, which are just have the property that all unit spheres should be spheres, and that the uh, induction assumption is that zero is a minus one generalized sphere, and then you define a Q-manifold like before, that every unit sphere should be a Dane Somerville sphere. So it's a very natural thing, and in two dimensions, the first time it becomes a little bit more interesting. You can take two spheres and glue them together at two points, and you have this uh, property. But what we want is just a geodesic motion, and for that we just need that the maximal simplices have the property that every maximal simplex has a dual simplex once you uh, order it. So we can reflect at the wall, at the q minus one dimensional wall, and that's an assumption which is very natural, which happens for manifolds, and it happens also for the in some of spaces. So that's space, and uh, as before we have just, uh, if you totally order the facets, we get the frame bundle, a principal frame bundle with a structure group uh, the commutation group with q plus 1 elements. So it's an sq plus 1 bundle. Everything is finite, combinatorial. We don't go ever into the continuum. We don't assume infinity at all. And then we define particles. So particles are just maybe generalized spaces. I like to think about divisors as generalized spaces. They have cohomology, they are delta sets, they are, they are very natural. Uh, spaces themselves, so a particle configuration is nothing else than a divisor on P. So what it is, it's an element in the free abelian group generated by P. It's also very natural, especially because one has in a discrete Riemann-Roch theory, one looks at such divisors. And here we have a graph we can actually connect to. We have this uh, kind of if they are dual to each other, so kind of we connect two like this, and then we have a graph, a triangle-free graph, and a Riemann-Roch, uh, discrete Riemann-Roch theory works there, and so there we have divisors. So divisors also motivate and what, you know, why we want to have positive particles and negative particles. So in this case, divisors naturally have positive parts and negative parts. Also, the particle position is actually just a not ordered simplex. It's an element in the simplicial complex. So that's matter. And now we have a time evolution. So time evolution is just, we have done that the last time, it's just done in such a way that the, a single particle moves with a geodesic, on the geodesic, and then there is an interaction, which would be the most natural one. We don't want any parameters, we don't want any choice. Like when you look at games, uh, like, chess. So if you look at uh, cellular automata, there are just tons and tons of different cellular automata. Two dimensions already, there are 200, 2 to the 250, two nearest neighbor cellular automata, like the game of life of Conway. So there are many, 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 many ga games. Well, I think this evolution which is defined here is something you naturally come up with. So what do you do? So first of all, we want to write it as a product of two involutions. I'm obsessed with this because this is natural. The infinite dihedral group is natural while the integers are not natural. A detail, but it also kind of has practical value if you implement it, and the whole thing is implemented in less than 12 lines currently, the whole thing. Implemented in 12 lines. I will post that, this 12 lines, a poem of 12 lines. I'm obsessed with brevity also. Just also zero parameters is kind of the opposite of what we are doing with AI. AI has usually kind of now hundreds of billions of weights of parameters. What von Neumann already knew that with four parameters you can 
fit an elephant. Indeed, you can actually, with four parameters, kind of draw the shape of an elephant. And with five parameters, you can even have it wiggle its trunk. How many parameters did you use for the fit? And, and how many free parameters are there in your, in, in, in your method? So I counted up, it turned out there, there were four. And he said, you know, Johnny von Neumann always used to say, with four parameters, I can fit an elephant. And with five, I can make him wiggle his trunk. <coughs> but here we have zero parameters, we have no choice. And the no, no choice is by just, you know, writing it like that. We have kind of, it's just one evolution, which just reflects over. And then the second uh, uh, is turning. And we turn according to how many particles, signed particles we have here. The positive particles come positive, the negative particles come negative. So if you have a Q positive particles, it's the same thing than one negative particle. So that's actually kind of something which also brings everything to the finite. We can ignore Q plus one particles at the same point P in P and uh, which have, you know, a positive. So it's modulo Q plus one, it doesn't really matter. Not that they kind of don't move, they move around also, this Q plus one particle, this positive negative particle pair, but it's more like an eddy motion, it moves along without influencing the rest. So we can ignore it for, you know, all reasonable purposes. And uh, also what I like very much is that the dynamics produces a time dependent permutation. And that was actually my op original motivation. Right? Then you have a space, we have now a dyna dynamics, the geodesics is a well-defined dynamics. But one of the problems is if you have two points in this space and you want to go from one to the other along a geodesic, this doesn't exist in general because there's just a finite rule which you have locally which you can go. So there are only finitely many geodesics which start at a, a point. So you cannot reach every other point. But if you do that, if you take this time dependent, you know, motion, you can just get from uh, any point to any, any other point by just waiting and kind of getting pushed along particles like a probe in space using the planetary motion to get moved around right kind of sling so you make these slingshots around the planet planets to get anywhere you want right so that's kind of the, that's the idea these particles steer around even two particles that's already non-trivial right if you take two particles and you know Newtonian Kepler problem uh, and uh, they steer around space and the third particle moving in that time dependent field is already chaotic. The uh, restricted three body problem, that's already highly non-trivial. And uh, if you take with more particles, it's even more complicated. If planets moving with the sun moving around and you have an interesting symplectomorphism, time dependent symplectomorphism, which you can use to go from essentially any point to any other point. <clears throat> So I call this the eddy motion, and that, that that's actually was my original motivation even to look at this whole thing, because I was frustrated by having no Hopfrinov theorem. Hopfrinov means also that you, any two points can be connected by a geodesic, at least one. And uh, now this becomes possible because we can use all these particles pushing us around. And it's also natural because in physics that's what happens, we have particles. We, see that in physics. But in one dimensions we have particles can either move through each other or they can bounce off each other. So it's, and if otherwise they move freely. So that's what happens in one dimension. In two dimensions it's already interesting. For example, we can have, can have periodic points, blinkers, like in the language of, you know, Conway's Game of Life, you have blinkers, kind of that's, these are periodic Solution. This is an example of a blinker. It's a particle antiparticle at the same point, same position, but not the same momentum. Right? The momentum is a little bit different because the orientation is different, permutation the order is different. And so this is a blinker. So X and Y, this is a particle antiparticle pair at that point, one, two, three. If a pair antiparticle pair here, and then in the next step, this pair antiparticle pair goes here, so this flips forth and back. But then when it's another particle comes, this has an effect and it, they will move differently because they have different momentum, so they move apart. And so you have this 
blinker, you have the particle coming and then poof, they go all away. But that's just one example of many, many different examples of dynamics which you can study. And that's only in two dimensions. I think in three dimensions, it's even more, much more interesting. And uh, you can look at that on any Sabovil manifold. And it's a game with zero parameters. You have no choice for the rules. <clears throat> that's it for today. Thank you.